Hi guys and welcome back. We had a very, very short break, but I hope you guys are prepared to meet this amazing guest because you are going to have to get ready to listen, be all ears, and have all eyes on him. This amazing guest, like I said, has been in the industry since he was five and he has been in it for 60 years, seeing the industry change, been a part of it, knowing who to know, what to do, where to be, and he's still working to this day and is bringing the talent here at social media shows. So everyone, please welcome Doc Phineas. Hi, Hi thank you so oh, much for coming. So my good mom. to see I you. Know. <laughs> Please take an amazing seat. You guys, what's so funny about Doc Phineas is that I actually met him through social media shows. I had done a movie premiere, I was hosting that red carpet, and he yes. had come up. I never know who's going to come up at those red carpets. It's like, I, I, I'm just like, hey, we're winging it. Exactly. And he comes up in all Versace, as you see now. And that was the first thing, and I was like, oh my god, who is this fabulous person? <laughs> so luckily after that, and this was months ago, like we were able to connect. Yes. And here we are. Here we here are. Here we are at the hot seat. You're sitting in it. I man. just look You're at Priscilla, I say, there's my sister from another yeah, mother. <laughs> period. Yes. So we have so much to catch up on. I've even seen him at events, and we're going to get to that later. But first, we've got to talk about the fit, Versace. Thank you. You have a history with Versace. Like, he's obviously been working since he was Long five. But let's get with Versace because there's so much to cover here. So well, yes, and thank you, Donatella. She Donatella. just hooked me up. <laughs> but I just was with Versace show in West Hollywood. Mm -hmm. We had a magnificent show right before the Academy Awards. Mm -hmm. Donatella flew in with, like, all of these fantastic, fantastic creations. I was there with Naomi Campbell, with Cher, with everybody was there. You know, it was just fantastic. And um, she said at the end of that show, she said, this is Doc Phineas. I want you all to get to know him. He was a dear friend of my brother, Gianni. Mm -hmm. And it was my very first job in modeling when I went to Milan. And in those days, nobody knew who Gianni Versace was. He worked for Caprice. And I was the fit model for Caprice. That meant you had to be six feet tall, your waist size 28 for a guy, and 120 pounds. Wow. So I was just like, the clothes would just hang off me. And that's the way we were in the 70s. Mm -hmm. You know, that was the look. Twiggy. Mm -hmm. You know, that really skinny, skinny look. One salad a day. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's bad. No yourself. dressing. No dressing. <laughs> uh, I'm the model for Gianni Versace. Yeah. So then he started his own line in 78, and I was one of the few he took with him into the line. And I'm still on the catwalk. And I would like to say that to my agent, who said my career would not last past 28. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still out there at the catwalk, and I'm in my mid-70s. Yeah. So, you know, don't let anybody tell no. you what your career's going to be. You can't do this. You're going to be too old. They're going to put you out yeah. faster. It's just simply not true. It's all up here. It's how you think ye are, ye are, yeah, right? Exactly. So I'm very proud to still be in fashion. And of course, now, you know, I'm working on my 51st movie, which is oh, pretty wow. exciting. Mm -hmm. Over 300 television shows. I'm in three, three stage shows in yeah. Vegas right now. So I'm 180 feet tall on the side of the Palms. I'm 200 feet high going around the Virgin Hotel. And I'm just up there with Barry Manilow now at West Amazing. Eight. Amazing. <laughs> so yeah. This is incredible. And I'm out there singing, dancing, tap dancing. I don't yeah. have any aches, no pains. That's the thing. It's because so, you kept up with it. See, when you're consistent and you're yes. going along the years, like your yes. body just acclimates the fact that, hey, he's, he's not done. And because when you stop, thinking, then, you, then you, your body kind of going back and forth. You are and right. So, yeah. You are right. And and also, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I'm, I'm ardent about yoga. Mm -hmm. I, started, okay, that's your thing. I started the yoga center at Caesars Palace. And I went to Caesars at Glossville and they said, hey, we need yoga here. Everybody in L.A. wants to come in and do a yoga class. They built me a $1.5 million yoga center. I ended up teaching Elton John, Cher, Dolly Parton. All these yeah, people. that'd be amazing. I hope you send Maria a lot of photos. I would love to have this pop up in your interview. Yeah, a lot of photos sure. of you on the catwalk in Italy and like... You know, that. with all the greats, and it's amazing. So you had mentioned that, you know, you're on the palms. This is a big thing that I want to talk about because he is kind of the celebrity. I want to call you a host because you're kind of always there. Yeah. I was invited once at the Ghost Bar. They have this amazing party called yeah. Glam and celebrates mm -hmm. the LGBTQ+, plus, along with the allies. They're to just celebrate 
life. It's an amazing community. Just celebrate, celebrate life. Celebrate life. And especially now with being Pride Month, it's amazing to talk about this and promote this because this is somewhere that everyone can go, yes. meet people, feel safe, network, and just celebrate people who are just there to be have fun and just give love to each other and to Vegas and just celebrate the amazing people here. And he was there and like I run into, I was like, of course he was in Versace, of course. <laughs> and it was absolutely amazing because that was the time when we actually had um, Perez Hilton who had just recently yes, moved here Paris Hilton. at that party. Mm -hmm. So it's amazing. So tell the, the viewers a little bit about Ghost Bar if they can go, if that's something that they're really So interested. one thing that Priscilla and I share that's very close to our heart is glam, right? Mm, glam. Yes, so it's called the Glam Party. And actually, when we were putting this together, we just thought, you know, here we've got these closets full of beautiful clothes, and everybody dresses so grungy, even in Vegas. Mm -hmm. And back in the day, you wouldn't dream of going out to a casino unless you were like, right. putting it together. I remember those days. Yeah, back then. I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and one day I was with Steve Wynn, and Steve Wynn goes, Doc, you know, I love the way you dress. But look at these people. They're like in their flip-flops, like in our towel, and the, you know. Part of this floor costs millions and millions of dollars to bring a marble in, yeah. to do all this fling. Come on, can we step it up here? So we decided, let's have a glamorous party where we dig in our closet and get our most glamorous things. We all go celebrate glamour together. And that's what that party is. And we had three winners from American Idol mm -hmm. sing this last Sunday. Oh, wow. Amazing. We had most of the winners from RuPaul were there from almost every yeah. season. These fabulous, fabulously yeah. amazing, you know, across, uh, you know, all different kinds of transitional people mm -hmm. in all yeah. different kinds of costume. Yeah. And then we also had, like at my table, we had Jessica Alves, who has a huge social media following. Pink came to say hello. She saw my uh, song and I opened up the whole thing with the disco number singing, We Are Family. Oh, wow. Everybody was on their feet dancing and singing. I had my moment as Sister Sledge. <laughs> and um, then I go back to get the elevator and here comes Kim Kardashian. You know, so I mean, these kind of people are like, you know, coming yeah. to, to this party. We've had Lady Gaga there. Uh, you know, it's just amazing that this party just started out as an idea. It's now the number fourth top party in America to wow. attend. So people are flying wow. in from Miami. That's They're amazing. flying in from Houston. I, I would have been there and I was invited. I'm just like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just coming, right? Like, like, <laughs> you look so glamorous. I like, I have to say hello to Priscilla. Look at her. Actually, you I, know. I did wear Versace that night, too. You yeah, I did. You were <laughs> drop dead gorgeous. It That's all I had to say. <laughs> it, was, it was a great time, you know, it you get to see a lot fabulous. of performances, there's a lot of drag performances, um, a lot of people, and they're all very local here that are in shows currently and they're people yes. that you can meet, so it's great to celebrate. You know, obviously it's not everyone's thing, but it's something to check out, be open-minded and just come. Uh, the it's networking so is incredible. And the view from the bar of the Strip oh, the is view. fabulous. It's the best like, it's view very, in very Vegas. Fabulous. And we're yes. all out there dancing under a disco ball and, yeah. you know, I'm like, wow, look at all of these celebrities everybody just who's not a celebrity looking like a celebrity you know like just like a field of like we're awesome after after party from the Oscars or yeah. oh yeah yes I think the was the there, there, there was the Academy Award. Exactly. So exactly. we're going to bounce back to your past. So you had about tap dancing. So you had started <laughs> when you were five a lot of just being in performing arts, yes, right? Thanks that's true. Thanks to your mother, right? Yes. You a very supportive mother for you in the arts. Because I feel like you just came out of the womb a star. <laughs> At least, like, you know, like, you're not far from the stage, and me having studied in theater and knowing a lot about stage acting and yeah. performance and musical theater like that, that was kind of where your start was, exactly right? Exactly where and my start was. And how was that experience? Like, because this was back in probably, like, the 50s, if I remember your bio correctly. Exactly. Yeah, so it was a completely yeah. different time. So tell us what that experience was. You know, was television, like. it just started. Mm -hmm. And so they were kind of deciding where to go with TV. And my mother said, and my mother was in her 40s when she had me, and she said, after nine months of having Fred Astaire in my womb, you know, I'm going to definitely have you take tap dancing lessons. Mm. So I literally came out tapping, is what she said. And by the time I was three years old, I, I was already pretty good. She gave me piano lessons, violin lessons, because I think she just felt like this was going to be a career for me. Yeah. So anything she could do to help me that way. Mm -hmm. And she was also one of the main persons putting a lot of catalogs together. So she was like the main person for like J.C. Penn. We're going mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Back in the time when we shopped a lot for new catalogs, like we didn't have the internet, we had to look at these catalogs and pick out our outfits, mm -hmm. you know, especially if you're in a small town and you didn't 
dinosaurs. So my mother said, well, I've got a son. He's great. I'll put him out there to model. So I was literally in these catalogs from the time I was five. And then she took me to Hollywood. She goes, I'm going to introduce this boy to Uncle Walt. So I got to meet Walt Disney. And he said, do you have the biggest eyes? Like, I definitely have some ideas for you. I appeared as a guest on, Ma on The Masketeers. And from there, they saw me tap dance, and they brought me right on as a regular on the Pinky Lee Show, which was kind of like our original Pee Wee Herman. Mm -hmm. You know, hello, he, he, yeah. my name is Pinky Lee. <clears throat> so I did a lot of dancing, just a lot of dancing as a kid. And I remember being out there one day, and I said, Mom, you know, I'm kind of tired. Do I have to dance today? And my mom said, do you want to eat? I was like, oh, I'm dancing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm dancing. So, you know, when you have, you know, that sort of parent that's like, get in there, yeah, do it, yeah, yeah. don't complain. This is show business, and I'm giving you a career. And I just thank that woman. I had her 87 years. Yeah. We had so much fun together. Uh, we went on cruises together all over the world. She was here in Vegas. She taught yoga to senior Wow. Every day of her life, including her last day of life, mm -hmm. she taught yoga. So I thought, you know, when you have a parent like that, you just it do it. You, work ethic you just you get up and do it, and make it happen. And so, here I am, Mom. Thank you so much for this oh, career. Watching for sure. It's you fabulous. Know, absolutely. It's and fabulous. I'm I'm working on my 51st movie. Mm -hmm. 51st yeah. movie. Who gets that? There's you know, maybe so Tony Curtis. Yeah. 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 And then 200. Uh, we figured out the other day, actually, 300 television shows. If we include all of my interviews with wonderful people like you, and right now three stage shows, but tons of stage. Mm -hmm. uh, I still play piano, I play jazz yeah, piano. Yeah, I say you're also a musician. In so that, yeah. I, I have a band. It's called Doc Finis and the oh, Sounds of Swag. Wow. Okay, very and fitting for you. We appear all over town, and primarily we do kind of like easy listening, yeah. bossa nova, very chic kind of things like that. I sing in Portuguese. You know, it's just wild. So yeah, I'm doing all these fun things in my 70s. So. For those of you out there who think when you turn 30, life is over, think of me. I'm going to come over there and smack you. You know, like, right. your life is just beginning at 30. And I can honestly say, at 72, I'm at my personal best. Mm -hmm. I've never felt better. My health is fantastic. I don't have any aches or pains. Yeah, and you're loving life. And what is it? I stay active. Yeah, because you, you're very active. I just stay active. With all your things that you're doing, you're here, there. He's the definition of an extrovert. He yes. is well, everywhere <laughs> that, he's, that has people, Doc Phineas is going to be there. As That's right. He should. So you, you know, you've talked a lot about how you started television, which is starting to be a thing. Yes. Modeling was very much catalog. It was very standard for yes. different types of body types what you had to look like was very much physical attributes not that it mm -hmm. isn't now but you had to be it was very difficult back then very. and had different types of difficulties back then than they yes. do now but you, the most important thing what I want to pinpoint is that you started and you've seen so many revolutionary changes with so fashion many. with modeling with stage oh, wow. up until now and you're still here working which is very important so your perfect candidate for me to ask the question was what is something that has carried on throughout that stayed the same because not there's very few things that have stayed the same right coming with technology right coming with you know content just things like that that people talk about with how accessible things are now what have you noticed that really much is the underlining commonality between all of the years since you started well uh, you know there's some elements let's say let's take fashion mm -hmm. so i kind of thought in the 70s and 80s when i was doing a of modeling like in Paris and I had my own collections back then and I thought what's going to be the future it's not going right. to be a catwalk so I honestly thought probably fashion will be suspended in air uh, you know maybe we'll come in on a spaceship you know I didn't know what it would be but the catwalk's still there after all these years and the way we walk on the catwalk is pretty much still the same yeah. you know if I look back to all of the, I was doing a lot of choreography in Paris for people like Gautier, I worked with Alexander McQueen, I worked with Yves Saint Laurent, uh, all of these people, Gucci. Um, and we had a certain way of modeling back then. The other thing was we had what was called the Dior turn. So you did a little bit more turn on the yeah. runway, but now the runways are smaller, and so it's just kind of like, pray you get past somebody and you don't fall off, you know, or fall yeah. down. But I just did a show in Paris for Wicked and Legal Trash. So it has changed 
in most ways, it's the yeah. days of, I, you know, I'm doing Dior, I'm doing Armani, it's very straight-laced. You have your clothes, you don't want to take away from the clothing. Now it's these people in these Avant-garde. enormous yeah. space that barely move, you know. And um, I actually went to a show where the models were blind blindfolded and fell off the end of the runway. So I was like, okay, that's very different. Mm -hmm. We never had things like that happen. So I will say it is very, very avant-garde now. It's a new world that we're in. I think Gen Z are redefining fashion with a lot of humor. And I think one of my favorite things on TikTok right now is there's this one gentleman who he has Paris Fashion Week playing on one side. He's on the other side taking things out of his kitchen and like gluing paper plates yeah, out to get the way. Yeah, exactly. I, mean, I laughed, but yeah. I just thought, wow, that is insane. But I love their take on it because it's about humor, it's about fun, it's about creativity. So the catwalk's still there, but what goes on the catwalk no, doesn't. on there completely. Oh different. my golly. Even to different. the point where I know they don't pose as much at the end like they used to. No. You know, being a model, it's very much It's like just a, straight on, almost like Ambrose. Unless Andrews. it's yeah. a celebrity type of show, I know the Victoria's Secret show used to be a very big thing, and it's not yes. really, but it was very much celebrating the stars of modeling mm -hmm. instead of just fashion, and so then the, you, they, models would take their time. You know, a lot of times, sometimes they say, as a model, take your time, but at the same time, they're like, not really. Like, yes. they don't want to make it about you, but the modeling, and I noticed, and you even pinpoint it, and something people need to know is that as a model, you can't let the clothes wear you, but you also can't overpower the clothes. You can't. So how do no. you, I mean, it's fine, because it is about the clothes, but people like, who's wearing it? Why should I also wear it? Why do I want that? I want someone to make it look like, okay, I could do that too. And that is a true model, is that's who's someone that can do that, is both things, which makes exactly. it extremely hard. Yeah. Yeah, and you know that last show that we did in West Hollywood, it was on the rooftop of the PDC, if mm -hmm. you can imagine. Donatella yeah. flew in with Naomi, everybody came in for that. All the supermodels were there, mm -hmm. the fam most famous models. And I love that show because it was so classic Versace that she went back to the vision of Gianni. Yeah. And so many things were so wearable, so beautiful that, I mean, I watched Billie Eilish buy something, you know, just right there, yeah. you know, in person. She was like, I want that. You know, people were exactly. jumping in. And then said, you know, there's nothing wrong with going back old school and doing those classic forms in a world where the avant-garde is totally tolerated. I love it, I get it, they're pushing the envelope. Mm. But to have things that are very wearable that you can wear to Met Gala, you can wear to the Academy Awards, you can wear to HBO Awards, you know, like, it, that's very important to have very wearable stuff. And I was so proud to be there, you know, like Naomi was like three people ahead of me, and I was just watching how she glides. You know, no one can walk like Naomi, you know, yeah. she just, has this like everything she wore I mean people screamed and bought it yes, immediately yes that's exactly what the point of being a great model is and she's that. so famous yet mm -hmm. she does not overpower the outfits she keeps a look on her face of elegance it's not too hard it's not too soft it's not too smiley it's not too sad she's just right in there in there but what we call sattvas that perfect point in between mm -hmm. and she just walked it yeah. and this the flow of it, I could see why Beyonce just said, I want that black dress, you know? Exactly. <laughs> she literally takes a black yeah. dress because Naomi looked so great in it. So fashion today resembles in many ways the way it was when I first got started. You can imagine in 67. It was really when I first started, like, in, and here I am. It's 23, and I'm still out there on the catwalk with just the most wonderful, fabulous designers yeah, and that, Donatella's. That's amazing. Bravo, darling, you're doing a great job. Bravo. Like, Bravo. I just love yeah, everything. Absolutely. She hand painted the fabric for my suit that I made. Oh, bought. that's amazing. Is that not As just you should. phenomenal? It is. Wow. So you're originally, you're not originally from Vegas, right? I'm not. No, I, I spent so much of my life in Manhattan, okay. in New York City. And then my parents did something fabulous. They moved to the so I went to this very small town this for a while, and um, I went ahead and I went to school in Switzerland my okay. junior year, and so I had a lot of time to like really kind of formulate my fashion mm -hmm. and acting and all of that. Then I moved to San Francisco when I was 17 years old, and so I would go to the American Conservatory Theater and spent yeah. several several years like in Agatha Christie and stuff on on, on Broadway there, and uh, then of course I went back to filming in Hollywood. 
which right. is a lot, uh, very common of a lot of the guests here. You know, you take on things and you learn when you acclimate to these different cities you live in. It kind of molds your talent and into who you are today, right? So that's 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 great. So, you know, you were able to work kind of in the yeah. Hollywood thing while living in completely different places, it seems. That's amazing. Yes, and also my father, you know, the whole time he was saying, well, I don't think acting is a great career. You know, you need something else in there. Yeah. Why don't you pick something in the sciences? I want you to get a college education. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, Dad, uh, I think archaeology. Yeah, <laughs> so that's like, a Oh, no, I was going to do archaeology. You know? But I got my PhD in archaeology, and I was at Berkeley. And my first job was go to the tomb of King Tut. And if you can imagine, you literally yeah. go from being on Broadway in San Francisco, you know, so like this tap dancer, all the things I was doing, getting my degree in archaeology, and here I'm climbing through Valley of the Kings, and I'm like, I'm Indiana Jones! <laughs> yeah. yeah! I mean, archaeology so, is, yeah. Oh, it's a great it's profession. profession. And that's why I ended up on Pawn Stars. A lot of people know me yeah. as yeah. Dr. Phineas yeah. on yeah. Pawn yeah. Stars. Yeah. Yeah. An antiquities yes. expert. I'm on Mysteries at the Museum. I'm mm. uh, on so many shows where I come out as an expert, and you know, I'm literally the real deal. Telling people that's worth something. That's not worth something. Yeah. That's worth several hundred thousand dollars. I just saw that one for set at cost plus for a dollar twenty nine. You know, yeah. so I got a fool over here. So. Yeah, right. So like, your name. Before we go, I want to mm -hmm. put two more things. Like your name, Doc Phineas. Yes. Um, where did this name? come from because I know that's kind of your stage. So, yes, you know, so it's, it's a tribute to my mother. Mm -hmm. My mother said that she always thought I was like David Niven in Around the World in 80 Days. So she called me Phineas Fogg. That was my nickname at home, was Phineas Fogg. So then I sort of became this big steampunk, you know, and I, okay, I, yeah. I did my mustache about 10 years ago, and I think I sort of became yeah. the world's most famous steampunk. You know, I ended up at 50 different conventions all over the world, every year making appearances. And they said, well, you just can't be your regular name. You have to be a cool steampunk name. So I took the name Doc Phineas since I was a doctor. You know, I have a PhD. Right, have a PhD. And my mother wanted me to be Phineas. So I said, well, let's just be Doc Phineas. Yeah, it works. And it really yeah. stuck. You know, like, I was so surprised. And I was going to go back. Originally, I was Ken Castle. And I was going to go back to that. And my agent goes, oh, everybody knows you on TV as Doc Phineas. Yeah, and they'll just call yeah, you Doc. I love and that. Yeah. So I think it, it's kind of like being Cher. You know when you're just Doc. Mm -hmm. Everybody remembers it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's great to yeah. be a Doc. My experience is in India. I have a new book out called From India with Love. And it's all my experiences I had in the 60s and 70s going to India. And at the time when the Beatles were there, and Mia Farrow was there, and Frank Sinatra. All these famous people from America went to India and their meditation. So that was kind of in the 70s, you know, and I carried that meditation, that peaceful Qigong. Yeah, so like your philosophy, you would say, would end up just being calm and being more of a, a peaceful, keeping a peaceful yeah, mind. Yeah, staying centered, staying focused, okay. but having a good discipline okay. in there, too. Yeah, so that, there it is. He's very disciplined. He's very calm. He's very peaceful. He has kept his energy throughout all of these years. So obviously, yes. like... You know, yoga does a lot. I've had a lot of people on here who are who practice yoga, who teach yoga, and they also have that very centered quality about them and outlook on life. It's very different than yes. many people, but I feel like that can inspire so many people who are more spiritual and who kind of seek that peacefulness within themselves in their life for their purpose. And for you, your purpose is to be a celebrity. <laughs> hey, you're honest about it, you're here, you're doing it, and so that's obviously good. that's what we like to have here on the hot seat. So everyone, Doc Phineas, there's so much to cover with him. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we don't have enough time to go on all the things he's doing, but he is working on a movie, so make sure that you are keeping in touch with him. Please tell them where your social media um, you. handles, where they can find you, so that they can keep up to date. With you. So, yes, um, please reach out to me. I'm on Facebook, Doc Phineas. You'll find me there. Uh, you'll find me on Instagram, Doc Phineas. You'll find me on TikTok. I'm on Swarm. Uh, you name it, Tumblr. I'm out there. Doc Phineas. This is yeah. D-O-C, P-H-I-N-E-A-S, and DocPhineas.com. Yes, so there it is. Keep up to date with him. See him at Ghost Bar for the Palms Glam Party. That happens pretty often here. Obviously, it's a place to be. You want to yes. see people like Kim K and, <laughs> and Pink. I mean, hey, you know where you'll see us. I mean, I'm, you know, yes. you'll see. And he's always modeled as, and there, there's posters everywhere, celebrity guest Doc Phineas. So, I yes. mean, and he's always probably he's going to be there unless he's working, which is great. He's someone that you want to network with, someone that has a lot of stories to tell. He's seen a lot of things. 
So, always approach Dr. Nice. He's very, very welcome when you see him. He's always up for a hug and a hello, and, and it's just a great time. So, thank you so much for coming thank and sitting here for so on the hot seat. I was so fun. Thank yes. you for having me in. Love to all of you. And when we come back, we're going to pinpoint another amazing star here in the film industry, so make sure to hope anywhere.